Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm Luc van Gaal. I am a clinical endocrinologist and a professor of medicine working at the Department of Endocrinology and Diabetology at Antwerp University Hospital in Belgium. I am already for approximately 30 years now involved in both obesity care and obesity research. I'm going to deal with you with an important question about factors that may affect obesity. Many patients and many physicians have often questions that about. So I think it is good that we try to summarize and update this particular aspect. What we know to start with is that obesity is a multifactorial disease. So this implicates that it is influenced by many factors. To start with, the genetic ones. We know that roughly 20% or maybe over 20% of the body mass index variability can be accounted for by genetic variations. And one mutation or one polymorphism may become more or less important, but it's roughly 20 to 30%. So we know that obesity is partly heritable because we have found in many, many studies that there is a strong link between body mass index and other estimates of fat accumulation and family members. This has been studied in uh, family studies, in uh, diazygotic twins, in uh, uh, people living in different areas of the world. Each time the genetic aspect came into a consideration. When we move from the genes to another aspect which is important in that multifactorial aspect is the environment. We know that more food is consumed when people are eating in company than when they do that alone. We also know that consumption of high amounts of fat is of course playing an important role. This can be saturated fat and I think a misconception people sometimes have is that the so-called and labeled healthy fat, such as the monounsaturated fatty acids, they may be healthy and good for health, but calorie-wise, they are exactly the same as the bad saturated fat. And a very particular aspect to consider for the future, certainly with, uh, with the environment, is the trans fats. Trans fats that are very often used in commercial production of, uh, of, of some food, because from this trans fat, it has been clearly shown that there is a strong link with accumulation of the important visceral fat. Besides these initial factors, we also have medicinal, physiological and psychological aspects that may play a role in the development of overweight and obesity. Let's look to medicines. Certain medications may contribute to weight gain, including corticosteroids and other hormones, antidepressants and specific neuroleptics, treatments for epilepsy and for HIV, for instance, and glucose-lowering agents that we prescribe for diabetes may definitely contribute to weight gain. We know, for instance, if we prescribe insulin, if we prescribe classical conventional glucose-lowering agents, that they may, in the initial period of prescription, lead to weight gain of a few kilos, three to four kilos maximum. Psychological factors. Lack of sleep, stress, depression, anxiety, or also aspects via very complex systems that may lead to uh, overweight and obesity as well. In physiology, we know that a number of endocrine diseases, such as hypothyroidism, growth hormone deficiency, and Cushing's disease, in excess of corticosteroids, may contribute to obesity as well. Other factors are fat metabolism, plasma lipoprotein levels, and oxidation reactions also contribute. And very recently, 
we also know that in the environment, endocrine disruptors may also accumulate within the body. What are endocrine disruptors? These are compounds that we find in the environment, such as biphenols, dioxins, all those, these compounds have been banned for many years from uh, uh, industrialization processes. They accumulate in fat cells, and the consequences can be seen for many, many, many years. And the final aspect uh, for the development of obesity uh, that I would like to stress with you is what happens in the brain. And I would like to tell that to you because people should understand physiology because physiology is the background for the later link for therapy. If we understand very well physiology, then we might better understand why some medications and approaches help and why this is an overall very complex system. For instance, if we understand how physiological hormones, transmitters, peptides that are released from the fat cell, such as leptin, from the stomach, such as ghrelin, such as incretin hormones from the gut, how these products talk to the brain where they are mediated by pathways within the brain through different receptors. And this finally may lead either to food intake, less food intake, satiety, and finally combustion. And this brings us then to energy expenditure, which has been covered separately. When we would like to identify what obesity exactly is, we have weight, we have BMI, we have waist and, and, and hip circumferences, all aspects. We have total fatness that you can measure. You learned already how to do that. But there is still an additional interesting aspect. That's the difference between fat cells. You have hypertrophic fat cells, you have hyperplastic fat cells, but you also have brown and white fat. What is the difference? Well, brown fat that we usually see uh, being present in animals that we see uh, immediately after birth in humans is mainly located around the neck, around the large blood vessels of the thoracic region. Brown fat is very closely related to thermogenesis, as you have learned, one of the mechanisms by which the body can produce heat. So this generation of thermogenesis and this specific heat may account for 15% of energy expenditure in general. So the ability or the inability to utilize this brown fat thermogenesis may finally result in obesity because this brown adipose tissue of obese individuals is less responsive to stimulation and one of these stimulatory mechanisms is called adaptation. And research is being undertaken to try to convert these white adipose tissue or these white adipose cells into brown adipose tissue. If we would try to make a clear difference between white and brown fat cells, the white fat cells are responsible for energy storage, whereas the brown fat cells are more dedicated to heat production, and so maybe helping in a weight loss uh, process. White fat cells are increasing by age, and with age, unfortunately, the brown fat cells are decreasing. That's the reason why researchers, by the way, try to find potential drugs that may help in the so-called browning of these. And the final and health-linked aspect is that the brown adipose tissue and the brown fat cells are less associated with overweight and obesity complications, what we more clearly observe 
with the large amounts of white adipose tissue. So you immediately understand that this physiological aspect that has been detected only after a few years, that this aspect is important for potential future new approaches of therapy.